Greetings there peoples, your cult personality here, Toon Critics Name, Toon's Name of My Game. Welcome back to Roundtable's Magic, little podcast where we look at Season 6, or in this case, Season 2 of My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. It is a special sort of episode today. Toon, my present to you is that I'm not going to interrupt you. <laughs> she says oh, while wait, interrupting him. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, I'm not interrupting now. Good. Four, four and seven years ago... Oh my god. Uh, welcome to a very special Hearthswarming edition. The very first Hearthswarming edition of Roundtable is Magic. You already know me, Toon Critic. We have the usual crew with us. We have Lightning Bliss. I don't want to go back in the hole. It's scary. <laughs> <laughs> we have Golden Fox and Keyframe. I want you to tickle my funny bone. <laughs> Why do I live with you? <laughs> <laughs> I'll give it a good tickling. We have Voice of Reason. Roadblock end of the line sucked. Oh, don't don't get me started. That's a that's a completely different video for a completely different time. <laughs> we have, of course, the lovely pass it off to British Ninja. Ho ho ho! It's what I would say if it was Christmas, but it's not actually Christmas. It's about a week before Christmas. Why are we doing it on Christmas? Because everyone's too lazy to do it on Christmas. But oh well. Hello, Merry Christmas. And, of course, we always have big guests to the show, but I I say to you, I think we have perhaps the biggest guest that we have ever had. Ladies and gentlemen, Phillies and General Colts, I give to you the man... Hey, the... what? <laughs> Why do you do this? Why do you do... The man, the myth, the legend, Ooh, Anthony Frequency. Cool. Hello, darlings, and welcome to Anthony C's SJW Fortress, covered in by the stone patriarchs and the porcelain white knights. <laughs> You just say white knights. Um, oh god. Oh god. I don't want to be the here anymore. Can I leave? The Pop Patriarchies. There is no escape. <laughs> uh, <laughs> white knights, please. So firstly, Anthony, thank you for taking time out of your schedule to come on here. We are all honored to have you here. Uh, nah, it's a pleasure. Today we are reviewing Heartswarming Eve. Uh, as you can see here, I want to quickly mention that the title card of this podcast was made by Patchwork Heart. And gotta say, we all look pretty freaking cool in this. So, let's not waste any more time. Yeah. Heartswarming Eve, good old season two episode. Not a lot of us really remember it, though, I'm sure. I was going to watch podcast. <clears throat> so... As we all know, we talk about what we liked and didn't like on a good old round table, so we are going to get things started off with... How about let's get started off with voice. Oh, with me? Okay. Um, hmm. Thing I liked about this episode. Uh, Chancellor Puddinghead is awesome. <laughs> is that it? Represent. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was... Uh, actually, just the dynamic of... Um, uh, the Earth Ponies with uh, Apple, uh, with uh, Chancellor Pudding Head and uh, what's the cookie? Blackie's name? Cookie. Yeah. Smart Cookie, I think. Oh, Smart Cookie. Uh, j j just the uh, j just the uh, over the top straight man dynamic. Uh, that's uh, that's what I love There's about so the episode. Down. <laughs> like pl plus, Chancellor Pudding Head is the only per only pony who can think inside of a chimney. Can you think inside of a chimney? It's a good question. It's a very, it's a very serious question. I have to think about. <laughs> well, think about it while you go next, dude. Oh, 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 okay. All right, putting me on the spot. All right, all right. <clears throat> okay, so I really like this episode because when I first saw it, I was very impressed with how they were able to add so much lore to the show now i was still getting into being a brony at the time season two was um my i guess my entryway into things so when i saw this episode I, I had joked a lot that it was just you know just some regular show but apparently they put a lot of time and effort into like the backstory and the lore and all this stuff with the land so that got me curious to see where where else they could go with it and also i think it really fit how they were able to get the ponies to play um to play the characters, and it fit for their personalities, too. Um, yeah, I, I thought it, uh, how they were able to do that, the whole setting up the lore, and when they do it further on, too, is um, is very impressive. And I'm going to pass it off to Anthony C. 
No! Now, this is the episode where, just to be clear, I haven't seen it in a long time. It's the one where with Windigo's in it, yes? Yes. Yes. No! Yeah. Yep. Oh, the best thing about that for me was, was Pinkie Pie and a map. I don't know. Looking through the... Was that the one where she's actually got cut holes through the map so she can see yes. through it while she's watching the map? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it's like her own personal GPS. It worked. <laughs> Low-tech GPS. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I got a new splash. I like the idea of Windigos too. They were, they were fun. Mm. Yeah, we usually just stick to uh, to one thing that we like. So there is, if that was the one thing you liked, who do you pass it off to next? Oh, uh, ooh, oh gosh, uh, no, oh, a tune. I, I just went. You already did it. Sorry, I, I'm, I just, I'm trying to keep track of everyone's avatars here. And I'm while while you got, tweaking. You got, Ki you, yeah. got, you got you got me. You got Goldie. You got Ninja. And you we got Blissy. Blissy. Oh, what okay. Do you think? What did I think? Um, yeah, I would have said the lore too. I love the lore. I love all lore in MLP, so because I'm a huge on the fantasy. But I oh. love the moral of this episode. It kind of reminded me of the true story. Um, I think I can't remember if it was World War One or World War Two, but it was when that moment of time when Christmas was coming around. That two sides. World War One. Okay, thank mm -hmm. you. It was World War One, where two sides, Germany and uh, oh, America, or was it British? England. England, England. Thank you. England. They basically they hold they they called a uh, hold fire, and came together as equals to celebrate the holidays with one another, and and that's what that this episode really reminds episode. me of. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it really does remind me of that. Now, granted, uh, they were about to go to war. They theoretically didn't, but the leaders were practically at war with each other. But their assistants were able to come together and say, you know, I, I don't even dislike you guys. I'm just following them. You know, I don't see what the big deal is. And they came together. They were sharing stories. And that inevitably is what saves them. And I just, oh, I love that moral. So... Yeah, I wish I wish the world could really be like that, where we all could just put aside our differences and come together. Come together right now. Oh, in 1914. Dadgum, I really am a rainbow alicorn. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> oh, that's, I want to spread happiness and joy, peace and love, peace and love. I'm going to smack you. Love so and you know that, peace. Right? Love <laughs> and peace. I'm gonna dig at you so hard at Pacific Podicon, you know that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Who do you pass it yeah. off to? Uh, I'll pass it off to Goldilocks. Am I the only one who liked the uh, song at the end? Yeah, I like the song. Cause so many people said it was a terrible song. <laughs> there was a song. I mean, yeah. technically. I, I, I remember, remember the song. song. It was a choir thing. I remember Everybody the song. It's it like now. a choir. Everybody was singing together about coming mm. together and uniting as one. I, yeah. And. I felt ahead. it boring. I just felt it boring. Go ahead. No, like, I like that because it was just, it's everybody being happy and enjoy each other's presence. You know, it's it's one of those um, holiday cheery moments. And I just think that was just pulled off very well of that scene. It makes me think of the fa who da de fa who da de welcome Christmas from the Grinch. Oh, okay. Well, that that that's that's a good way to put it. But yeah, um, no, I'm just yeah, it's it's like imagine that with but with ponies. <laughs> and... Fa who ponies fa who ponies. <laughs> no, stop that. <laughs> Shame on you. Stop it. Get some help. I love that no. song. Hey. Because, no, no, no. I love the song. Because at the um, because when that song played, I actually shed a tear. I thought it was beautiful. Oh, you softy! Oh, d you're you're one to talk. That's why he's at the sentiment squad with moi. Oh, yeah. Jesus. Who do you pass it off to, sweetheart? I pass it off to you. Oh. Oh, it's so smegging sweet. <laughs> I know it's disgusting. I'm so <laughs> <laughs> biased. Oh. Well, first of all, I got uh, um, A and Y has a little revelation apparently. Oh, dear. oh really? Yeah. Indigos eat people. You always find a way to sneak him in here. Well, he also said what he liked about the episode, so here he goes. Oh. What I liked about this episode was the snow. Snow. It's 
What? You are such a troll, Aaron! <laughs> <sighs> Thanks, Max. But um, the thing I liked about the episode... I really liked how this episode was... I know it's weird to say this about an animated episode. Shot. Like, I love the... An- like, it wasn't like, oh, super epic fight animation. But some of the shots that they did, like, one of my... Like, two of my favorites are the three triangle panel shot that when it's zoomed out, it shows everyone in one place. Oh, yes. And then the scene where uh, Rainbow Dash gets... Ca- uh, covered in ice and how the ice grows. There's a great YouTuber that that sadly doesn't do anything anymore, and I wish from the dead. I think his name is Grant. Uh oh. <laughs> Going in and out. Things about the animation in MLP from the run cycles. Hmm? Oh, I know who you're talking about. Uh, Grant yeah. With that. Yeah, from the run cycles to the magic effects, and the last episode he did was showing how those shots can be recreated and how that magic effect can be recreated. And even recreating it looks really cool and is really interesting how even a recreation can do it. So I'm so just imagine how they did it in the show. And I don't know. I all and the Windigo's animation and design was really cool and stuff and everything felt it didn't feel over animated, but it felt not like nicely animated and that's something for season two because season two did have a step up in animation but it didn't hit its stride yet Mm -hmm. so that's what that's what keyframe liked about of course keyframe like that such a stereotypical answer (laughs) you know what i need to hand it off to someone who's not stereotypical in the slightest ninja why how stereotypical of you to do that stereotypical british ninja me (laughs) Anywho. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can't escape. No, you're locked in there forever. So, what I like about this episode is that I think it's really clever, and it's really original as well. Like, you know, MLP just being a show promoting friendship and togetherness, you know, a Christmas episode telling the touching story of camaraderie, it, it, it writes itself with this kind of thing. And if anything else, I'm happy to see that MLP, for its first Christmas special at least, isn't just retelling something traditional. Because even though I love Charles Dickens, it's it's really overdone. So, as I said, I like the originality. This episode takes very loose self-insert characters, which obviously represent the main cast, and just let them interact with each other for 20 minutes to overcome a winter-themed challenge. And, you know, they even cleverly tie that into the lore of the show. And, yeah, I just think that's really cool. And that's all I really have to say about that. But what do you dislike now, since we're going backwards? Ah, oh, damn, I didn't have time to script it all. Ah! Um, ah, gosh, what did I dislike? I- it's hard It's hard to point out things you dislike about, A, an episode that's so innocent. that You know, it obviously isn't trying to offend anyone. It's not trying to do anything wrong. And, B, an episode that I haven't seen in years. Uh, I guess that it focused a little bit too heavy on... I, I I really wish they would have done some sort of thing on stage more. Like, they actually showed how the play would play out as a play, instead of just being switching to this, I don't know, flashback to how it actually happened. Imagination land? Yeah, like, I would have actually liked to see the actual main six reimagining the, the, the thing live on the stage, instead or... of just doing a... Uh... I, I guess there are more creative shot pieces with the other option, but still, I, I, I'd have liked them to actually show the play more than just, uh, I guess, a short film. Uh, if I may? I, I know that's a very minor nitpick, but again, I don't have much to hate on this episode. It's Ninja, pretty cool. I think it would have been a little bit more interesting if they had like these big grand sort of things going on, but on stage it looks so shoddily put together, like the budget for the play <laughs> is nowhere near the budget of what's actually going on in the flashback. <laughs> That'd be yeah. really funny. You know, I can imagine that sort of um, in between the adverts bits, you know, where they lead into the advert and then come back from the advert and it just shows how the play really looks. Yeah. I feel like that would have worked. Anyway, who went? It was Keyframe, yeah. So I pass it back to Keyframe. Yeah, so um, here's here's Anne Wise wise words on this episode. Seriously. <laughs> this episode was bad and it should feel bad. But the other one was good. <laughs> Thanks, Max. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> it is a bad episode. You should feel yeah. bad for like it. That needs to, along with the hashtag, I like snow, also just put in the hashtag, thanks, Max. Um, <laughs> my thing kind of goes into Ninja's thing. 
in that while I did like the visuals in this episode, I feel like there were missed opportunities when it came to also also when it came to the visuals, but the fact it was a play. There could have been more of instead of the dreamscape or imagination land being so worldy, they could have had it where everything kind of has like maybe some of the maybe the sky or the clouds they don't look like the clouds in the show but they look like they're stitched in the background or something giving mm. it like the illusion that the things are not made out of the things that they're supposed to be I, I feel like what we're trying to get at is if anyone's ever played paper mario and the thousand year door that yeah. sort of aesthetic where it's I'm, clearly I'm, not a play but it looks like a play yeah or maybe you know have or when it cut or if it cuts back to the play I do like the idea of it being shoddily produced. Like, it looks kind of like the Peanuts Christmas special or something. Yeah, yeah as long the, as the window goes, don't eat the audience. Right? But the, actor, <laughs> but the actors are so engrossed in what they're talking about. That's why everything mm. looks so awesome. And Wouldn't that be a plot twist? They just cut back to the audience and it's all window goes. They're all gone. But it's just... <laughs> I, I, do, I do feel like something like that, or the transitions between the stage and the imagination land could have been a bit better but i mean like it's not that bad it's ba it's more of a thing of my preference and a critique just of missed opportunity i feel like if the if this episode was made in season five or something it would have had that aesthetic because i also have to remember yeah the animation was limited adding the adding textures and and all this stuff and all that attention to background stuff wasn't a super prevalent thing in season two so <laughs> I have a high, I have an un, un understandably high level due to the products that we get now, so I'm going to judge the things of the past. Ha! <laughs> but yeah, that was my that was my gripe. So back to Goldie. Yep. All right. So uh, so far, I've been hearing complaints about missed opportunities and such, yeah, and I'm going to judge the things. sorry. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> That was me opening up the Twitch, and I heard my voice. Okay, so as far as the dislike I have for this episode, this is actually going to put me into a weird position. I hope I don't take up too much time. This episode used to be the most underwhelming episode of Season 2 because of the quote-unquote missed opportunities. But unlike Bliss and British Ninja, when it was announced at the time that they were going to tell an old past I thought it was going to be a Celestial Luna episode, oh, boy. and it wasn't. But it's a time before that. I'm like, wait, there was times before then. I thought Celestial and Luna were like there the, since the beginning of time. Nope, whatever. My so head it is what it cannon. Is. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, it's just what I thought it was, and uh, it just wasn't like that. I'm like, oh, well, well, okay. Oh, well, that's going to make the lore a little more confusing. So. Um, mm, that was my biggest complaint when I first saw it. Is like, where are these guys? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they were not you... in this episode, were they? What is this a question? No, it, it, that you know, we, you want to go on and on about how the lore is great and all that sort of thing. It's like, yeah, but that's that just that just it is. It's further questions. Well, yeah, what what causes the biggest question about it is that the flag they raised had Celestia and Luna on it. Yeah, what the fudge? <laughs> so, yeah, so they must right. have already. <laughs> is this? They are Maybe the chat can tell us this. Is it? Is any of this covered in a comic book or something? Might might be, I but that's that. not canon. Our voice is the comics guy. I, I, oh yeah, I, I don't think I, so. I don't. Is it, it may be in the Journal of the Two Sisters? Let's I'm get back sure. to Fox, guys. Yeah. I was going to say, in Journal of the Two Sisters, they do mention Princess Platinum. So, I mean, she must have at least still been alive whenever the whenever the sisters were there. And I think they said that Luna was still very young. But it's still, it's also, you know, young is a relative term when it comes to the allegory. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so that, that, that used to be a thing at the time. And I'm just going to, like, I'm sorry to sound like a broken record, but quoting from what Mr. Enter said, judge for what it is, not what it could be or what it should be. I'm, and... I'm going to do it anyway. Screw you. Well, I'm going to act like that towards the Equestria Games then. Ooh. Screw you. <laughs> I... But no, um, but, but back to, um, back to what, uh, back to the subject. Um, I've started to grow and appreciate the episode as is. The thing I don't like about this episode, and it's a nitpick, um, it's when 
it's when the main six are arguing before the performance, like they're behind the stage. We have a scene where uh, Dash has the window open and she's like, she's showing off her giant ego saying, Rainbow Dash. It's not the Rainbow Dash episode. Well, it should be. <laughs> and I'm just like, um, Dash, do you realize why you were here in the first place? Dash, yeah, you got two true. good. You got two episodes, I think, during season two. On one hand, you had Read It and Weep. On the other hand, you have Mysterious Mary Well. Shoes. Anyway. I also uh, made the best bed win. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I guess that. Yeah, that's the other one. <laughs> that right. puts it more in the positive favor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I always kind of like seeing that they're not super 100% friends all of the time. Like, I, I like little moments of conflict like that. Yeah, like, we're not a whole no, 100% do. friends. No, no I Yeah, get I hate that, Toon but... Critic. But just like how it all started, it's just they're they're fighting over stupid reasons. Yeah, they're petty, <laughs> but they're petty. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, um, who went? Who went? Uh, I think it was Bliss. 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 Yeah, it was okay, me. Okay, I pass it off to you. Um, maybe it's just me and my own little imagination complaining, or my inner child complaining, but. I, I wish they would have told this story in a different way. Instead of having this like at a theater in Canterlot, why couldn't it have been Twilight talking to Spike about Hearts Warming and how it began? Because, like, maybe he didn't fully understand the concept. And she goes into the story and it, like, fades to the story. And instead of the main six representing the generals and the assistants, why did it be actual characters she was speaking about? I wanted to see them not interpretations. That's... I know that, again, this is like a different concept altogether. This is like be a totally different episode in that case. But that's what I like to see in lore. I want to see the, the former leaders uh, before Equestria came to be. I want to see what they actually looked like and how they actually behaved. Not interpretations that the main six are acting out. So... It's a nitpick and more like a fantasy episode of, oh, this could have been so cool if it were done this way. I have a proposition for you. Mm-hmm. It is the magical land of fan fiction. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Magical is, is one word I would use to describe it, but not in the way you're thinking. <laughs> Welcome well, to the fan. I mean, I'm imagining ha- Ca- Captain Thunderclap. Was that his name? Original how, OC, do not steal. Like, how epic would he be what? to be seen, like, like that would be a cool new stallion design. He'd be, like, this robust, proud what, uh, Pegasus. Commander Hurricane. Commander Hurricane, thank you. Or, okay. I'm just saying, what if it were told this way? What if it looked like that instead of main six interpretations? Because that kind of rubbed me the wrong way. Um... But again, inner child screaming for a G1 representation here. So I'm just going to put her put her back in the corner. No, you need to sit down and be quiet. But I want a G1 represent. Shut up. Shut up and sit in the corner. <laughs> you stay, the you stay in the corner. You don't come out till I say. <laughs> and with that, I'll pass it off to Anthony C. <clears throat> what are we talking about? Things we don't like? Is yeah, that what One we thing are? you didn't yes. like about the episode. Yep. <laughs> Being one negative thing. Nancy. I, oh, it's the same deal I have with every every cartoon for children thing where they don't want to talk about Christmas. It's that happy holidays argument. It's like, well, I, I, no Christmas in here. Nah, just, just make up our own. And it's like, okay, fine. But it's, does, and I have to ask, does that ever, does that ever perhaps lose some of the meaning for it? I mean, hmm. Christmas isn't the only holiday about this time. And, I mean, you know, why not Hanukkah? Why not Ramadan or, or something like that? Kwanzaa. But, Kwanzaa, have, have a crazy Kwanzaa. You know, like, I don't think uh, I've ever seen anyone like, celebrate Kwanzaa. Have a nice day. Have a nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have a nice day. Anything more divisive than religion? Um, but we can all come together over ponies. Some of the time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that works. I, I would be very, very interested to see like the pony Christ and the story of the the, the birth of the Virgin Pony. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> we can't quite you show push, the cross, I don't you want know. Religion in it's my not, game. It's... Sorry. Oh, I know what? that reference. It's a game grumps <laughs> reference. Uh, I, yeah. I, well, I yeah. You... It seems no, like you... shows like where, like Futurama are gonna you know, like they actually do make reference to this sort of stuff. It's like always irreverent, but it's like I, I want to see a pony version of that. No. Oh, no well, this was the same season that disproved your theory of Celestia being God. 
Don't get out of it. <laughs> you know, you, know you, you see with the thing and the dude. Okay, um, that that story. Okay, um, that story is heavily based on like like the whole theory business was based heavily on um uh, uh, uh Tolkien and his take on the magisterium or the whatever it is the mm. theology behind the whole thing. So you got this analogous you know, doodad, um, you know, uh, Lord of the Rings sort of story going on there. Mm-hmm. And it's like, that's not bad. I mean, the thing is, though, that completely precludes it from having a, a Christmas story. So it's like, I guess you may as well just have some crazy hearts warming nonsense, I guess. But it doesn't seem to, from what I can tell, this is my only bet. As, uh, you, if you get on the Wikipedia or you go and ask one of the writers, what was your inspiration for hearts warming? I don't know if they'd, they'd be able to point to anything. I don't know. Is it solstice, like like the ancient Roman solstice, you know, like a holiday of the, or, or, or what? I don't know where this comes from. Just uh, pick from does the it list. Mean anything? That's, What's that's the literary quite... value? Yeah. <laughs> That's quite what I like about it, though. Like with the, with the other Hearts Warming episode that came out, season six. That's obviously, you know, Scrooge. That's obviously mm-hmm. Christmas. You know, even if they say it's Hearts Warming, it's obviously based off a Christmas Carol. This is just the characters doing stuff that kind of relates to the general spirit of Christmas. And, you know, I kind of like its originality in that it's not related to any sort of thing. You could it say makes- it's based off Christmas and Christmas decor, of course, but... Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it makes me... Th- First of all, screw you, Max. You know what you did. Second of all, um, <laughs> it makes me think of... Uh, if anyone knows the show W.T. Pony... Oh! Which, oh, I love I W.T. The, Pony! They, they always... They talk like this! And they have like the vectors going up and down. The one that they did for Hearts Warming was... We are completely not denominational. Like, they went on this thing, and then DeviantArt shows up being like, I am so proud. I mean... <laughs> Because that's that's the thing about Hearts Warming, is that while it does have elements of just the holiday season in general, it is basically the pony version of the red Starbucks cup, in that it could be anything you want it to be. Uh... Uh, Relating to the winter season, let me me, me specify. Happy holidays. Is there anything else you wanted to add, Anthony? No, no, that's fine. Um, it's season two, right? So yeah, it, it, it didn't annoy me as much as other things. <laughs> oh, yeah, there was yeah, there was totally not- nothing in season two that made you like made you mad or anything. Shit! <laughs> Don't step over the tripwire, Zach. <laughs> uh, but, uh, no, Zach isn't stepping over the tripwire. He's playing guitar on it. <laughs> <laughs> it just ding, 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 ding. I wonder what this wire does. <laughs> okay. Uh, I guess that goes back to me then. All right, so no, yeah, yeah it does. That goes back to the void. Oh, oh it does. Hey, hang on. It goes back to Goldie. I mean, Zach. God damn it! Ah, oh, oh, it's me voice. and then I'm shutting up. <laughs> okay, so this is the first out of I think we have three hearth swarming episodes. Yep. What was the second? Uh, Hearthbreakers. Uh, the, the oh yeah, I forgot about that one. Hearthbreakers. That was also fairly original. I like that. Yeah. So that, wait, is, that, wait, is that the one where they go to meet Pinky's family? Yeah. Yes. 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 Uh, Rock like soup for episode. dinner. I don't want to derail you. I just didn't like the way that um, that uh, Big Mac, you know, is is paired up with one of them. Marvel. I can't remember which what her name was, but she's paired up with one of Pinky's sisters or something. Uh, He's paired, and it's like, but what? Where's Cheerilee? Come on. What? What happened to that? <laughs> that ship suck like a rock. <laughs> Like a rock, yes. Got it. Hey, just catch my. Feet. And one of the sisters probably put a rock in it. Anyway, uh, so this being the first out of the three hearts forming episodes, I don't think it's really fair in my mind to compare them because the first the first hearts forming episode, hearts forming Eve, I feel didn't take advantage of a lot of the the things they could have, in a sense, because um, we've seen. Hearthstoring episodes later on, like Hearthbreakers, we see is a brilliant example of how they actually celebrate the holidays with like their families and whatnot. That's more centered around the holiday itself. And then you have a Hearthstoring tale, which sort of centers around that and uses it as a as a central theme while telling another story. You have the Hearthstoring Eve episode doesn't really have much of that. It explains 
what the origin of it is, but at the same time doesn't really show it that much. It builds up to it and then kind of just briefly shows it at the end and say, there, and that's how that happened. End of the episode! I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but I felt like it was it was lacking substance. Like it was it was a good it was a good sandwich that you could munch into. But after the first few bites, you're just like, wait, is this it? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And then you get it. And then you get it later on. And you're just like, oh my god, why wasn't this this? But again, it is not f uh, fair in my mind. I think to compare this because this was like the first one where they were setting things up for it. So it's it's like the first movie in like a trilogy. You know, it's I, it's I, really I, hard I... to be hard on it. <laughs> I, I have two questions. I wonder if we'll ever get a two-parter midway through the season. And the second part, what would the second part of this episode be like, Christmassy wise Like, Zach, you describe how um, you felt like, oh, is that it? Oh, I wish it could have been more. What would you have it more? Like, I would have made this a two-parter, honestly. I would have. I would have made... Okay, the with what? Uh, well, the Windigos you already have there. You could make it a little bit more daunting. You could have... Um, I know we had the whole, oh, we defeat it because we, we, like, you know, we care about each other. Power of friendship and all that. And that defeats the Wendigos. I'm thinking, can we make it a little bit more, uh, more bigger on a bigger scale? Which is, which is funny. Because you can't really do that much with the stage play. Again, like I said, it'd be hilarious if we could see the stage, uh, showing how poor of a budget it is. But then that could be a meta joke in and of itself. But, I don't know. I feel like... One, it's not really fair to compare much between the three of them, and two, this I felt like lacked some substance. It's it's probably like the the least good out of the three of them, but maybe that's maybe that's just me. It's not really fair to compare though. Mm. You can do that. You, to be fair, you could do that with a lot of movies. It's not really fair to compare such versus such. So yeah. Which is a really hard argument to go against because you can sort of be for it and then against it at the same time. It's 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 an oxymoron. And then, well, you know, if it's an oxymoron, then my point just got canceled out. So I'm just gonna pass it back to voice. I didn't have anything to say. <laughs> I made a paradox. Okay, first of all, Blissey, you stole mine. Ooh, oh. <laughs> Sorry. Penalty. Uh, penalty. Uh, we don't get penalties. Well, I'm in starting here. one now. That's red card, Blissey sit in the corner. Red card, red card, green card, yellow card. Blissey uh, sit in the corner. I am not excluded. sitting in the corner. You do not put Lady Bliss in the corner. Anyway, voice. Also, uh, second, just to judge the wish fulfillment, I wish that someone at the end said, and that's how Pinkie Pie got her cutie mark. No. <laughs> oh, that would have been brilliant. But alas. Uh, but I think my actual complaint is... Uh, the beginning and ending parts were not as interesting as the actual play. Yeah. Mm. That's I mean, kind of what I was getting at. Yeah, and I, I think uh, <laughs> what Seal was like, the Wendigos at the end, the actual end of the episode, they were still there. Yeah. I think it would have had like more of an effect. I think, uh, actually, Aficionados Chris um, mentioned this during his review, that oh, having boy. the Wendigos be like the main... Uh, antagonist, like main antagonist, like uh, as the st at the start of the episode, uh, all the all the way to the end, and have like, l like for example, all six of them are like arguing the uh, inside Twilight's castle, hmm. and and then they re and then they end up reading the like the har the the heartwarming Eve tale. Well, remember but Twilight didn't have a castle their day. Well. Yeah. I mean, hey, think, of, think of all the interpretations if it were read through a book, it, and it didn't have to be show style. It could be like pointed style, and it's cartoon edited, so it looks cool, though. You know what? That'd make a great Christmas special. Or that, could, or it could be like, um, you know, in a friend indeed with all the with the felt style. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I imagine it's really hard to do. Mm. You could. I mean, they did it for the Green Stone Stone episode. Just saying. Yeah, true. I guess. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So I, I guess my, that's my complaint. The the beginning <laughs> and ending weren't as interesting as the middle. Yeah. Mm. But overall, <sighs> though, we all like this episode, right? Yeah. yeah. Like, right. It's it's, it's, it's like, harmless. I, I think. Harmless is a good it's, word. It's, yes. it's it doesn't one, crush one, anyone's dreams. It's one of the better ones of season two. But I have to preface. Season two is actually my least favorite season. Heresy. 
blasphemy! I know, very unbeliever. That is most an Oh God, I'm being carried away by the by the zombies again. Hey, I'm, I'm sorry hey, for my what? opinion. I'm hey, sorry. Hey, oh, hey, and wine. Wait, wait, welcome everybody. Here. Welcome everybody to the to Roundtable's Magic, replacing Keyframe A and Y. Yeah, A and Y just God. replaces Keyframe. Oh no. <laughs> you know, fun um, fact, actually, Key, you can take this either way you want. Fun fact, if I had never met you, A and Y would be sitting in your chair right now. Oh. <laughs> well, you know oh, what? Why? I'm undead, so... Hey, Tunsky! Oh, God, there's <laughs> two of them. <laughs> Here we go. It's Key Frame Tolling! <laughs> <laughs> you know... It, it's not. I, I didn't bring this up as my negative because it doesn't affect this episode, but it affects the future. The, the other two heartwarming Eve episodes really break the timeline, and it annoys me because there's no two. There's two heartwarming Eve events at completely different times of the quote pony year, and ah, oh, it hurts. Okay, no, 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 okay. Right. Make, hold on, I'm just gonna make a quote from the nostalgia critic. <clears throat> just explain. Well, Just no, like, explain. They, they how could they explain that away? Oh, you mean oh. like explain how the behind the how scenes it works. thing stuck everyone up? Yes. Like I, 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 from what I gathered, you have winter wrap up and you have hearts warming eve. They're the two winter events <laughs> of the year, and yeah. that led up to season four, which was the start of a new year. And since then, we've had winter wrap up, which was the tank episode. Thanks for the memories. And then we had two hearts warming eves at completely different times of the year. <laughs> it just blows that, that, up my mind. It is some studio politics that caused it all, right? So there's no explaining that. So maybe it's just, you know, you just got to have to swallow the pill and... And they were in the summertime. They weren't released around winter. What? I, I what? believe... I, I, oh, I, I, I'm fairly certain that the the <laughs> Rock episode and... Yes, Heartwarming, uh, Heartwarming Tale was definitely not received around winter. That was like July. Christmas and, in July. Yeah. The, no, I think it was like May that we got yeah, Heartwarming Tale. Close yeah, enough. Last Winning Tale was in May, <laughs> and, <laughs> oh, and Hasbro, and, what uh, you doing? And uh, uh, Hearthbreakers was in October. Uh, it's closer, but you're still a couple of <laughs> months off. Yeah, let's release a Christmas uh, episode on Halloween. Let's do it. All right. We all know we, all know we wanted to skip Halloween and get to Christmas. So. We're getting off a little track, guys. So, voice, was I, there I anything? Just... Or was there anything else you wanted to add? No, that that's it. Okay, I think that's it. No more again. Christmas episodes. I am banning Christmas episodes. I will be I the Grinch. I want this podcast. a, I want a Grinch, heartwarming episode. Oh yes, please. I thought that was the <laughs> point of Tanks for the Memories. No, no, no. I just because they did the face does not mean it. But... No, no, she literally stole Winter. But no, I'm she talking like oh, no, she... I want an entire MLP episode, heartwarming episode in rhyme. That's not that hard in to do. In rhyme. <laughs> now, <laughs> it's so difficult to do, though. We did one. It is, it's uh, like a lot harder. On Toon Link's channel. And it's like, the, the, dif the difficulty you go through trying to make a whole... It's only like 10 minutes or something like that, but the, you want to make an entire 22-minute episode cartoon entirely in rhyme. There's the reason there's only one, The Grinch Who Stole Christmas or whatever it is. Like, the actual Dr. Seuss size. Well, um, well technically... Kind of um, What's what's the face? Uh, the, there was an episode of Danny Phantom where they did a majority of the episode in rhyme. Oh, good luck the, with them. the Ghost Rider. Mm. They're all geniuses. <laughs> well, all right. it's a, it is it is a challenge, but it can get it can you're, you're treading a fine line between um, really ingenious and just freaking irritating. <laughs> yeah, having to retell the same story using different words and still having it rhyme would be terrifying. Challenge. But if they had if. Yeah, if they did it, have Zakora yeah. narrate it. It'll be fine. All right. <laughs> so, last thing before we head off. I know it is near Christmas, so we're going to play a quick little lightning round. So you just have to answer with just one thing. Favorite Christmas movie, starting with voice. Uh, uh, the Nightmare Before Christmas. Keyframe. Oh. Wacko's Wish. Golden Fox. Charlie Brown Christmas. Lightning Bliss. Krampus. Anthony really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Had to double check that. <laughs> Anthony C. Die Hard. You 
That doesn't count. I was it going counts. to say it yeah, counts. It does count. It does count. It you do know count. that Die Hard was released in July. Despite I don't it. care. It right. counts. Christmas film. It counts, Goldie. <laughs> By British MLB news, yeah. rules, it counts. If they can release Christmas episodes in July, so can we. <laughs> British Ninja. Um, I'll just be stereotypical yeah. and say Grinch. I really love it. Okay, well, I'm still going to go with Die Hard then. It's my, it's, it's my, my video and I can say whatever I want. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, the, the Jim Carrey's the Grinch then, if I have to pick. Oh, okay. Should I change mine so you can, you can, you can keep Die Hard? No, I, I don't care. Everybody to... loves Die Hard. We can, we can, we can share. You know, we're, we're cool. We can share. change it to Elf or something or, or, or. Oh, whatever. Elf. Uh, I hate Die Hard 2. Uh, okay, Die Hard 2. Uh, it's bad. Because but Will Ferrell is annoying. I oh, come that. on! It's children, so children, well please. Like, they tried. They really tried. Well, you someone mentioned it. Polar like, Express. Oh, please. <laughs> no, but I have a question for Zach. What? Are you surprised I like Krampus? Have you even seen it? Yes, I have. I really did enjoy it, but I was expecting you to pick some, like, cutesy winter movie. No, oh, I, I gotta see I Krampus. Is that a, that's I a think... horror movie, right? It is. You know what? Yeah. Soon... Oh, I'm gonna see it. You can have Grinch, and I will have the little donkey, a uh, small one. I mean, okay. uh, I mean, let me ask you the question: Do you like Gremlins? I mean, Gremlins That's was Christmas. all right. I... If you like Gremlins, you're gonna love Krampus. <laughs> oh, I, here's the thing: I have seen Krampus. I really love it. Anyway, we're getting off track, so we're gonna ra we're gonna wrap this podcast. Uh, yeah. It's just me. Does Krampus sound like a kind of a swear word? Ah, Krampus. <laughs> yeah, Krampus it wills. It's I'm Satan it Santa Claus. <laughs> so like, it's halfway between crap and cramps. And <laughs> so crappy grandpa crap, uh, uh, cramps. And pus. Anyway. Pus. It's got pus Ugh. in there. Yes. Ew. Yes. Okay, Krampus that's just pus. weird. Anyways, so we're not going to be doing a roundtable on Christmas because it just so happens... Um, Next Sunday, there is going to be Christmas. So we want all of you to just have a happy holidays from all of us. Join us on January 1st, the first round table. I love you magic. all deeply. And love you all in the chat. All. You're all fantastic. I'm sorry I didn't pay any attention to you. <laughs> well then. Oh, I'm scared. Well, I lost Chad, my train you, of out, you just got a snog from Anthony, so <laughs> you got a present this year. <laughs> and, and there wasn't even mistletoe. So join us January 1st when we talk about Lesson Zero, and I think after that will be Pacific PonyCon. So, yes, we you all have a wonderful holidays, whatever the heck you celebrate, whether it be Kwanzaa, Hanukkah, Ramadan, Decemberween. I know a lot of you celebrate Decemberween. Who doesn't? Happy Pizza, <laughs> I've never heard of this. Obviously, you never Zach. heard of Homestar Runner. Nah. Anyways, right. from all of us at Roundtable's Magic, thank you all for watching. You all know what to do on the uh, other stuff. Anthony C., <laughs> thank you so much for making this holiday episode so I'll worth get it. Out of it. Stop it. Hey. <laughs> it's a delight. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right. From all of us here at Roundtable, happy holidays, and we will see you on the next episode. Thank you for watching, and stay awesome. Kiss off! Okay, and my says, Anthony, take me now. <laughs> 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 <laughs>